Hello and welcome. After quite a break, I just had to clear my mind for a while and stop doing videos and stop working on Unreal for, for a few weeks. Uh, but I am back and I wanted to show you the US update to HR Pro, which is already live uh, for 4.26. It's the 3.2.1 and it is being pushed to Epic, so it should be online uh, soon. Uh, but if you don't want to wait, you can download the source on our uh, Discord channel. Link is in the description. So let's see what is different. Uh, all the previous videos we've dealt, uh, we've done, they, they still work, nothing changed. Everything works as it's used to. So nothing is uh, broken per se. You don't have to redo any of your work, uh, except we added some um, ease of life uh, improvements. So first of all, for any character that has the AGR um, animation master component, now this master component has uh, two new events. One is on base pose changed, and second is on overlay uh, pose change. Remember that those poses can be called uh, just as um, they can be called by the client without any validation on the server side, which means that they should be used only for cosmetic stuff. But now you can read the previous value and the new value whenever poses are being changed. And this is using network prediction. And based on those uh, tags, you can, for example, do some extra functionality or you can, for example, use them to um, get your uh, uh, anim instance and for example you can uh, yeah you can link uh, animation layers so you don't have to use uh, animation subgraphs like I did uh, in previous videos now you can also use this uh, methods to actually link uh, animation layers and layer animation in a single graph instead of using those subgraphs by interfaces and i will show you how to do that in future videos for sure uh, because there are certain things that uh, layers are superior in compared to subgraphs they are a bit harder to work on but uh, uh, they are uh, especially good when it comes down to performance on a really large scale so whenever we are changing uh, poses we're getting those uh, information here Second addition is that uh, now it properly works for any actors uh, in the world that is, for example, a chest and should have items. Uh, it couldn't have items attached to it properly for some reason uh, at certain uh, situations when you have stackable items. They didn't attach properly to chest items. So let's make a, uh, just, just an example uh, chest blueprint and I can show you how it works now. So just call it BP chest and let's just give it a static mesh component. Mm. Static mesh and let's find, please say it has, yes, it has a chest. Great, let's make it root. Let's add another static mesh component let's make it uh lead no uh chest would lead okay it's this one uh, let's drag it up and somewhere like here i guess a bit to the side okay there we have it, so that, that's a chest. This is attached to this, so this component should be movable and it is absolutely ignoring. Uh, oh, you know what, let's make it a custom and let's say that it is blocking visibility and camera, but it is blocking, blocking and it should, ah, it's fine, it can do that block all dynamic okay that should be that should be okay mm, and now we need to do inventory okay so we got this inventory manager 
And what we want to do on begin play, do a delay. And after delay of, let's say, two seconds, we want to uh, get all actors with tag. And the tag is item. And for each item, uh, mm, let's get item component. Get item component. Uh, owner ID is valid GUID not, which means that it is not being owned by anyone. Uh, then we want to get item component and say pick up item. So we're picking up every item that doesn't have uh, an owner up to this point that we are running this function. So this is our chest. Let's place it, let's say here. Okay. And let's see if it works. So this is our chest, let's hit play. I can pick up like one coin, so it got an owner. And it didn't do anything. Maybe this check I overdid it. So owner ID is valid. Check if the given GUID is valid. Um, inventory ID valid. Uh, and is valid? No. Then we want to pick up. Okay. This should work now. Let's see. I will pick up just one coin and then it pick up basically everything. So let's go here and let's find our guy. Uh, where's our controller? So there's our player state. I got this one coin that I picked up. And then we have this chest. Let's find this chest. It should be here. So BP chest and it got all those items attached. So what we want to do now is to drop those items by this chest. So we wanted to just uh, spray them out here. So after he completes that, let's do a delete again. Let's make it like two seconds. And then we want to get inventory. Mm. Get all items for each loop. And now we want to uh, get item component and want to say drop item. So once we drop the item, mm, then we want to set location immediately on the same frame. And we want to say, let's add an arrow component and let's move it a bit up. Do we need to rotate it? Shouldn't really matter. But let's move it like this. Uh, okay. Now we want to get uh, world location and then we want to add a vector for that location and want to do a random vector. Uh, in con in degrees. Uh, con direction is uh, well no. We want to get forward vector. So this is the direction and angle okay and the angle will be let's say 90 and then this is a unit vector so we need to multiply it by a float this float will be 50 and you know what it will be random float no 
random in range, random float between 1 and 50. And what we want to do is this and it's like this and this is the new location and it's a teleport so what this should do this should drop all items here and do a cone 90 degree forward and stop dropping items this direction randomly in 50 uh, up to half a meter from here in all directions so let's see if this actually happens go he picked everything and he started dropping and okay he dropped only one thing i guess not all of items why Okay, let's do it differently because maybe we shouldn't try to drop everything at the same moment uh, so let's do a timer by event let's make an event custom event say drop item and what it will do it will random array item Will drop this item it will teleport it but in order for this to work we need to make everything here uh, a function so drop random item whoop we should make this part of the function as well so let's copy that and paste it there's no inputs whatsoever. Mm, okay, promote to local variable, the item. So this is the item we're dropping. And now we can use uh, the item here as a reference. Okay, so now uh, yeah, it will be cleaner like this. Okay, so first off, we select a random item, and then from this random item, we do this stuff and return node. Okay, and now let's go back into chest, event graph, and let's say do that every uh, 0.1 second looping. So just start spraying items every 0.1 second, and let's see two seconds pick them up and start spamming them okay it seems to be working yeah and i want to show you one more thing that was fixed by the recent update and that thing is the scaling of the items so uh, previously all items were spawned with scale 111 even though their default scale might be different so for example here if you open this ammo you can see that there is the static mesh which is a scale of 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.1 and once those items are being dropped and uh, and picked up they uh, previously rescaled to 111 so you had to code in rescaling back to the previous scale but now thanks to the power of c uh, and some functions that are not exposed to blueprints if you make any item uh, by default bigger or smaller uh, it will actually um, affect uh, how it's being stored and spawned. So if you go into this Glock and we just go into the skeletal mesh and we'll say to lock everything and scale it to three, which is ridiculous, right? But this has to be not, I mean, if you scale an item here, let's say that I scale something not on default, but this particular uh, single mesh, it is uh, non-stackable, so it will work. However, stackable items, they get reset to default. And the default is the one that you have set here. So if I change this weapon's default, or if I change, let's say, pistol uh, ammo, right? Or any ammo scale, 
uh, then it will use the scale of the default uh, item. So if I hit play now, you can see that the Glock and the MP7, they got properly scaled up. Seems fine. Mm, okay, let's scale it back to one. I don't want to deal with it in any future tutorials where I might still use the weapons. Uh, and yeah, so that, that fixes uh, all the issues we had on multiplayer with uh, AJR Pro. So the next step uh, is adding the combat component, which should happen pretty soon. But uh, knowing that this is working, I can start working on the next tutorial series, which will be uh, a survival game. So thanks for listening and see you soon in the next tutorial.